Hello, in this lecture we will find uh, the area of the yellow circle. As you can see in the drawing, we have a semicircle, and uh, the center of the semicircle is at, is at point O, and uh, inside the, the semicircle we have uh, the yellow circle and uh, the size of the line segment pq equals to 7 times root 2 and uh, the touching point uh, between the semicircle to the yellow circle is at point p or point p is a point of contact between the semicircle and the yellow circle so uh, uh, let's uh, define uh, la, uh, point uh, M as the center of the yellow circle. Then we will connect uh, together points M and O by a straight line. And uh, actually, MO equals to the radius of the yellow circle because uh, line segment MO starts from uh, point M that is the center of the yellow circle and ends at point O that is uh, a point on the yellow circle itself. For that reason, it is defined as the radius of, of the yellow circle. Any line segment uh, that is inside the circle and starts from the center of the circle and ends at any point on uh, the circle, then it is defined as the radius of, of uh, the circle. For that reason, uh, line segment MO that starts from the center of the yellow circle and ends at point O that is a point on the on this uh, yellow circle itself it is defined as uh, the radius of the yellow circle uh, I will mark it as uh, small r abbreviation for the radius and uh, actually we have uh, a rule, uh, rule number one, uh, that states that uh, if two circles touch each other, either internally or externally then the point of contact lies on the straight line joining their centers.
Okay, I will read again rule number one. Rule number one states that if two circles touch each other, either internally or externally, then their point of contact lies on the straight line then the point of contact lies on the straight line joining their centers okay now I will explain the whole actually the yellow circle touches the semicircle at point P. Point P is defined as the point of contact. So, according to rule number one, the point of contact lies on the straight line joining their centers. So, rule number one states that point P lies on a straight line. Which straight line? The straight line that joins the uh, two centers together. Actually we have two centers. Uh, point M is the center of the yellow circle and point O is the center of the semicircle. So the segment line MO that joins the two centers together with point P creates one straight line. Okay, or we can also say that if we connect points P, M and O together with, uh, by a line, then this line will be a straight line. Okay, so actually rule number one states that PMO is one straight line. Okay, PMO is one straight line. Again, rule number one states that if two circles touch each other, either internally or externally, in our case, the yellow circle touches the semicircle internally, then the point of contact, that is to say, the point of contact point P lies on the straight line joining their centers. So point P lies on the same straight line that joins the centers together. So if the two centers M and O uh, are connected together by the line segment MO, then Point P lies on the same straight line. That is to say, PMO is one straight line. Okay? Point P lies on the same straight line as, as line segment MO. Or in other words, PMO is one straight line. Or again, if we join, if we connect together points P, M and O, then by a line, then that line will be a straight line. Okay, so PMO is a straight line or PO is a straight line. So, I'll read it in the last, uh, for the last time. If two circles touch each other, internally or externally, then their point of contact, that is to say point P, lies on the straight line joining the centers. So point P lies on the same straight line that the line segment MO lies. Line segment MO joins the two centers together and point P lies on the same straight line. That is to say PMO is one straight line or PO is a straight line. So we can also uh, say that the line segment MP is uh, the radius of the yellow circle. I will mark it as small r uh, because uh, it starts from the center 
of the yellow circle and ends at point P that is a point on the yellow circle itself. For that reason, MP, the line segment MP is defined as the radius of the yellow circle. Okay, so, and uh, actually, because of the fact that OP is uh, a straight line, then we can say that OP equals to two times the radius of the yellow circle. That is actually the diameter of the yellow circle. So OP equals to the diameter of the yellow circle. Okay, OP it is a straight line and equals to two times the radius of the semi of the, the radius of the yellow circle equals to the diameter of the yellow circle. Because any line segments that uh, goes for the center of the circle and equals to two times the radius of the circle. It is defined as the diameter of that uh, circle. Okay, so OP equals to two times the radius of the yellow circle, and it is also equal to the diameter of the yellow circle. Okay, and uh, because of the fact that OP is a straight line. We can say that OP also equals to the radius of the semicircle because of the fact that OP is a straight line and it starts, the line segment OP starts from point O that is the center of the semicircle and ends at point P that is a point on the semicircle itself. It can be defined, it is defined as the radius of the semicircle. So we will mark OP as capital R because it is the radius of the big circle, big semicircle, while uh, the radius of the yellow circle is marked as uh, small r. Okay, and from the same reason, we can also say that OQ is also the radius of the semicircle because it starts from the center of the semicircle, that is to say from point O, and ends at point Q, that is a point on the semicircle itself. For that reason, OQ is also the radius of the semicircle. We will mark it as capital R. Okay, so we have two radiuses of the semicircle, OP and OQ. And uh, so, actually, now we can uh, define the relationship between the uh, small R, that is the radius of the yellow circle, to capital R, that is the radius of the semicircle. Uh, from one side, uh, we know that OP equals to two times the radius of the yellow circle. But from the other side, we also know that OP equals to the radius of the semicircle, of the semicircle that is the big circle. OP equals to capital R. Okay. So, OP equals to two times the radius of the yellow circle. It is actually the diameter of the yellow circle from one side, but from the other side, OP is also the radius of the semicircle. So, we can deduce from those uh, 
to equalities uh, OP equals to OP so we can substitute OP from this side of the equality by capital R and we can substitute OP in this side of the equation by 2 times small r so actually we got the first equation that states that the uh, radius of the semicircle equals to 2 times the radius of the yellow circle or we can say that uh, the radius of the semicircle is uh, twice as large as the radius of the yellow circle or the radius of the semicircle is uh, bigger twice than the radius of the yellow circle okay or the radius of uh, the semicircle is uh, larger twice as the radius of the yellow circle okay so uh, we also have the second rule So rule number two states that in any circle a radius and the tangent to that radius are perpendicular to each other so I will read again rule number two. Rule number two states that in any circle a radius and the tangent to that radius are perpendicular to each other. So if we have a radius, let's call it R, and we have a tangent to that radius, let's call it T, then the radius is perpendicular to its tangent that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees okay so in any circle a radius and the tangent to that radius are perpendicular to each other okay so actually we can implement this rule in our circles because we have the radius of the yellow circle, segment MO is the radius of the yellow circle, and we have tangent QO to this radius. For that reason, according to rule number two, 
they are perpendicular to each other. The radius is perpendicular to its tangent. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so a radius and the tangent to that radius, that is to say QO, are perpendicular to each other. That is to say angle POQ equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so we actually created here uh, a right triangle P triangle POQ is a right triangle because angle POQ equals to 90 degrees so I will draw again uh, the right triangle POQ So this is the right triangle POQ side OQ of the right triangle equals to capital R side PO of the right triangle equals to capital R and the hypotenuse of the right triangle POQ equals to 7 times root 2 so we actually can implement the Pythagorean theorem in order to find out the value of capital R that is the radius of the semicircle so I write down the Pythagorean theorem and then we will implement uh, the theorem in our uh, right triangle. Actually the Pythagorean theorem apply only to right triangles. Okay. So the Pythagorean theorem states that in a right triangle, because it applies only, it relates only to right triangles, or it is correct only in right uh, triangles. So the Pythagorean theorem states that in a right triangle, So if the triangle is not right triangle, it is not correct. The Pythagorean theorem is not correct uh, in triangles that are not the uh, right triangles. In the right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse the square of the hypotenuse equals
to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars So I read again the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. Okay, so in our uh, right triangle, we can say that the square of the hypotenuse that is to say p q square equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars equals to o p square plus o q square. Okay, so this will be our second equation. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, P Q square, that is the square of the hypotenuse, equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say equals to O P square plus O Q square. Okay, so uh, we know that PQ equals to 7 times root 2, OP equals to capital R, and OQ equals to capital R also. So we can put the data in the equation, in equation number 2. We get that PQ equals to 7 times root 2, so we have PQ square is 7 times root 2 square. OP equals to R, so we have OP square that is R square. And OQ equals also to capital R, and we have OQ square, so it is R square. And here 7 times root 2 square equals to 49 times 2, and R square plus R square equals to 2 times R square. Okay, again, 7 times root 2 is actually equals to 7 squared, that is 49, and root 2 squared, that is 2, and r squared plus r squared equals to 2 times r squared. We can divide the equation by 2. So after we divide the equation, we divided the equation by 2, we got that 49 equals to r square. Now we will take a root out of uh, equation number 2. We get that uh, 7 equals to r. So we got that uh, 
radius of the semicircle equals to 7 units, but we have already know that uh, R, capital R equals to 2 times small r, according to equation number 1. So we we'll write it down. Okay, according to equation number one, capital R equals to two times small r. Now we can substitute capital R by seven because capital R equals to seven, according to the second equation. Okay, so we substituted R by 7, we got that 7 equals to 2 times small r, we will divide the equation by 2, So we got that r, small r, the radius of the yellow circle equals to 3.5 units. So after we know the radius of the yellow circle, it is very simple to find the area of the yellow circle because according to the equation of the formula for the area of a circle, I will mark it as equation number three. The area of any circle equals to pi times the radius squared. A is the abbreviation for area, so the area of any circle equals to pi times r squared. But we have already know that the value of the of r according to equation number one, equals to 3.5 units. We know that the radius of the small circle equals to 3.5 units. So we can substitute R by 3.5 units in the third equation. So we we'll get that The area equals to pi times 3.5 square. So we substituted r by 3.5 in the third equation because r equals to 3.5 units. So we got that the area of the yellow circle equals to pi times 3.5 square. 3.5 square equals to 12.25. Okay, 3.5 square equals to 12.25, and pi times 12.25. Uh, 25 equals uh, so the area pi times 12.25 equals to 38 Point 48 units of the area of the yellow circle equals to 38.48 units. Okay, the area of this yellow circle equals to 38.48 units. Okay, so now I will summarize the lecture.
so actually we wanted to find the area of the yellow circle and uh, we know we have uh, in the drawing a semicircle the center of the semicircle is at point O inside the semicircle we have the yellow circle and uh, the size of the line segment PQ equals to 7 times root 2 and uh, the touching point between the yellow circle to the uh, semicircle is at point P or the point of contact between the yellow circle to the, to the semicircle is, is at point P and uh, we actually defined uh, the center of the yellow circle as point M then we connected points M and O together so the line segment MO is actually the radius of the yellow circle because it starts from the center of the yellow circle and ends at point O that is a point on the yellow circle itself okay for that reason MO is the radius of the yellow circle and uh, we actually have rule number one that uh, states that if two circles touch each other either internally or externally then their point of contact lies on the straight line joining their centers okay so uh, the yellow circle touches the semicircle at point P point P is the point of contact and according to rule number one their point of contact lies on the straight line joining their centers so the point of contact P lies on the straight line that joins the centers together so if the line segment MO joins the two uh, centers together then point P lies on that same straight line that is to say PMO is one straight line okay point P lies on the same straight line that MO the line segment MO lies so or PMO is one straight line or we can also say that if we connect by a line points P, M and O together then that line will be a straight line or P, M, O is a straight line or we, or we can say also that P, O is a straight line okay so again point P lies on the same straight line that M and O lies or if the line segment MO connects the two centers together then point P lies on the same straight line that is to say PMO is one straight line or if we connect points PM and O together then by a line then that line will be a straight line okay so PMO is a straight line or PO is also a straight line okay and uh, uh, so actually MP is also the radius of the yellow circle because it starts from the center of the yellow circle and ends at point P that is a point on the yellow circle itself for that reason MP is the radius of the semicircle and because of the fact that OP is a straight line and uh, it equals to 2 times the radius we can say that OP is actually the diameter of the yellow circle but because of the fact that OP is a straight line we can also say that OP also equals to the radius of the semicircle because it starts from point O that is the center of the semicircle and ends at point P that is a point on the semicircle itself for that reason OP is defined as the radio, radius of the semicircle we marked it as uh, we marked it as capital R and uh, 
Uh, for one side, we know that OP equals to two times the radius, that is the diameter of the uh, yellow circle. From the other side, we know that OP also equals to the radius of the semicircle. We can deduce from it that uh, the radius of the semicircle equals to two times the radius of the yellow circle, or the radius of the semicircle is twice as large as the radius of the yellow circle. Okay, and for the set, uh, for uh, the same reason, we can say that OQ is also the radius of the semicircle because it starts from the center of the semicircle and ends at point Q that is the point of the semicircle itself. So OQ is also the radius of the semicircle, so we have two radiuses of the semicircle, OP and OQ, and uh, we actually have also the rule number two that states that uh, in any circle a radius and the tangent to that radius are perpendicular to each other. So if we have a radius that we call the R, and we have the tangent to that radius, then the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. That is to say, this angle is 90 degrees, and this angle is also 90 degrees. So we can implement rule number two in our circles, because actually we have the radius, line segment MO is the radius of the yellow circle, we have also the tangent to that radius, that is QO. So, according to rule number two, the radius is perpendicular to its tangent. That is to say, angle POQ is equals to 90 degrees, because the radius is perpendicular to its tangent. That is to say, angle POQ equals to 90 degrees. So we actually, we created here right triangle, POQ is a right triangle because angle POQ equals to 90 degrees. And uh, I draw again the right triangle POQ, side OQ equals to capital R, side OP also equals to capital R, that is the radius of the semicircle and the hypotenuse of the this right angle equals to 7 times root 2, so we can implement uh, the Pythagorean theorem in order, in order to find out the value of the radius, the value of uh, capital R, okay, the radius of the semicircle. And according to the Pythagorean theorem, uh, in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, the square of the hypotenuse, PQ square, equals to OQ square plus PO square. Okay? That is the second equation, PQ square equals to OP square plus OQ square. But we know that uh, we know that uh, PQ equals to seven times root two, OQ equals to capital R, and PO also equals to capital R. So we can put the data in equation number two, and we got that capital R equals to seven units. But according to equation number one capital R equals to two times small r, or the uh, radius of the semicircle is twice as large as the radius of the yellow circle. So uh, we can put, we can substitute r in the first equation by seven because, because r equals to seven. So we will get that 7 equals to 2 times small r, we divided the equation by 2 and, and we got that the radius of the yellow circle equals to 3 times 5 units and now it is very easy to find out the uh, 
value of the area of the yellow circle because the area equals to pi times r square the area of any circle equals to pi times the radius squared but we know that the radius equals to 3.5 units so we can substitute the value of r by 3.5 units and we got that the area of the yellow circle equals to pi times 3.5 squared and the final result is that the area of the yellow circle equals to 38.48 units so the area of this yellow circle equals to 38.48 units okay thank you very much